Hello, this video is going to be on all of the pediatric pharmacology. This video is going to be set up where I, there's a couple of new drugs that are kind of sprinkled in to the PowerPoint. And so I'm going to cover all of those first. And then the rest is all review from previous modules. And so what I did is I went back through all my drawings and I added these little footprints through all of the drugs that are for that are safe for pediatrics. The reason I chose footprints is just because A, kids love to run around barefoot, and then B, you know how pedestrians are sometimes abbreviated as heads, like, you know, like head crossing, pedestrian crossing, and well, pedestrians are walking, so they leave footprints. So however you wanna think of it, this little footprint sign is gonna be on all of the pictures that are safe for pediatrics. And just a fair warning, this is probably gonna be a really long video because even though in the PowerPoints he doesn't specifically list the MOA and adverse effects for all the drugs, it's really hard for me to explain my drawings without mentioning the MOA, otherwise they don't make sense. So this is gonna be a really big review of pretty much everything. Now, before I get started with the new drugs, I do want to mention the very beginning of the PowerPoint. He talks about how pediatric drugs and pharma pharmacokinetics are a little bit different than adults. I don't discuss any of this in this video today, so I would definitely recommend that you read through those slides um, so you don't miss any points on the exam about pharmacokinetics. So now I'm gonna go through the new drugs that we haven't really had before. And these are just, I just took pictures from the internet to kind of help, help them make sense. So these first drugs are not really in a particular order, but we're gonna start with attention deficit disorders. So ADD, ADHD, and some drugs that you would use for that in pediatrics. So here's your little footprints because they're safe in pediatrics. So we have an amphetamine mi mixture, which we all know is Adderall. And just to help you remember Adderall, I thought of the addition sign and then also Adidas, just because they both start with add. And another drug we can use is, I'm not even gonna attempt this big long name, but brand name is Vivance. To me, Vivant sounded like vibrant. So we have these very, really, really vibrant highlighters here. And it is next to this guy who is performing at a violin concert. Um, so and that's to represent the drug Ritalin and then Concerta. So Ritalin kind of ends in the word, uh, like similar how violin ends and then Concerta, these at a concert. And MOA is that these are dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So dopamine is shown here with this dope leaf and norepinephrine. I always think uh, like NE is northeast. So we have a little compass here that says northeast. So dopamine, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. And again, that's Adderall, Vyvanse, Ritalin, and Concerta. Adverse effects are all shown here. So appetite suppression, I have always shown abuse potential with an apple core um, just because abuse starts with an A and potential starts with a P and the word apple starts with an A and a P. Um, insomnia, which is shown here. Growth suppression, I have a little ruler. Tachycardia, so this high blood pressure, or sorry, high heart rate. And then the next one is high blood pressure, so hypertension. And then if you have Tourette's, you can get worsening ticks. So we just have a bunch of ticks in a line. Another drug for attention deficit disorder, which has really similar MOA, but it's a little bit different and has different adverse effects is Atomextine or Stratera. So to me, Stratera sounds like strategy. And this is like a little game plan like someone who is strategizing for a game 
And the MOA is that is a dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor in the prefrontal cortex. So pretty much the same as this one, but they specify that it's in the prefrontal cortex. So that's why we have a big brain here. And again, we have our dopamine and our norepinephrine, and it's kind of pointing towards the prefrontal cortex. Adverse effects are shown here. So suicidal ideation, so we have a noose. Sedation, so a seed, seed for sedation, and then anorexia, which in this case, I don't believe they mean like anorexia, like the condition. I actually think it means more like loss of appetite, but I wanted to use the same words that he did. So anorexia. Moving along, a newer drug that we haven't learned yet in farm is this palavizumab or synergis. So this is for RSV. It's only for prophylaxis of RSV. But how I remember this drug is it starts with pal. And so I think like a, a pail, like a little bucket. And this little baby, he's playing in the sand with his shovel and his pail. And he's building a sand castle. He's building a barrier around his sand castle. And so this is a monoclonal antibody against RSV which means it prevents viral re-entry into cells. And so the reason why he has a barrier is because it's preventing viral re-entry into cells. Barriers, you know, like a wall blocks things. Um, and then adverse effects are just fever and rash. And obviously we have a sick baby here, so RSV, sick baby. Moving along further to something sort of new, although I'm sure you all have probably heard of it before, is benzocaine or pharyngeal, also called anbesol or oragel. And so this is used, you know, when kids are teething. And it's a local anesthetic which inhibits sodium channels. So there's a lot in this picture for something so little, but benzocaine, I have a bent cane for benzocaine. And of course, I just included the picture of the actual product because why not? And here's for the, M the MOA. So it's a local anesthetic. So this symbol is like your location symbol. So local anesthetic. And it is inhibiting sodium channels. Sodium and then it's a channel on a TV. Adverse effects are burning. And then methemoglobinemia, which is rare, but it's just a reminder, this is a condition where you're, there's a dysfunction with your hemoglobin and it can't, you can't get oxygen to bind to it, basically. And so you are like severely anemic. So you want to avoid this if you are less than two. And then before I get into the review of all the things, we are going to go over potentially inappropriate medications for pediatrics, and I have a couple memory, tri memory tricks. And I'm going to forewarn you, some of these are very dark, okay? You've been warned. So, codeine. You don't really want to give codeine to kids because it can metabolize to a metabolite of morphine. Now, morphine by itself is okay for some reason, but like when you give it as codeine, it metabolizes weird and can be deadly. So the way I remember this is if you give a child codeine, they will be coding. So, you know, asystole coding. Um, the next drug that is potentially inappropriate is ceftriaxone in newborns. Now, just a heads up, cephalosporins are generally okay for teats, but you don't want to give ceftriaxone to a newborn because it can displace the bilirubin and cause carnicterus, which is a form of like brain damage basically and so uh you don't want to give a baby an axe to cut their corn corn for like corn icterus corn icterus current like corn kernels corn icterus anyway don't give babies axes except try axe so don't do it next is any dopamine antagonists because they can cause torticollis so again you don't want to give a you don't want to give babies dope dopamine dope don't give it to them. Next is salicylates and sulfonamides. These are both 
bad because they can cause rye syndrome. And so salicylates kind of sounds like salamanders, salicylates. So don't let babies play with salamanders. And um, sulfonamide sounds like cell phone. So you shouldn't give a baby a cell phone either. Topical steroids can be potentially dangerous. Uh, you can still give cortical steroids quite a bit in peds, but just be aware that it can be absorbed systemically and then cause a lot of endocrine problems. And so cortical steroids begins with the word court. Babies don't go to court. That's how I remember that. Again, TCAs, paracyclic antidepressants, they can be used in pediatrics for a variety of reasons. I believe it's enuresis, we'll cover it. Um, but you should be aware that it can cause behavioral changes and they can be deadly in overdose. So the way to remember that is if you put a baby on a tricycle and they're too young, they can't ride it, they're going to fall off and die. Um, so tri tricycle for tricyclic antidepressant. And like I said, just don't give babies tricycles before they're ready. Next is valproic acid, which I always think valproic acid sounds like vulture. You don't want to give this to children who are less than six because it causes hepatotoxicity. So the way to remember this is if you're less than six, then they, that's supposed to say way, light enough for a vulture to swoop down and just carry them off. But if they're more than six, well, then they're like too heavy and the vulture can't just grab them and fly away. And then the last one, and this is definitely the darkest of them all, you don't want to use chloramphenicol because it can cause something called gray baby syndrome. And so the word chloramphenicol starts with chlora, which sounds like chlorine. And so if you let your baby drown in a chlorine pool, they're gonna come out really gray. Gray from gray baby syndrome. So now I'm just going to move down the list of, of how he presented harm. So going back to attention deficit disorder, in addition to your Adderall and Vyvanse and Ritalin and um, this other one that I didn't mention, uh, Focalin, um, and your Stratera, you can also use Catapress or Clonidine. And guanfacine. Now we have these, I we learned these in the cardiac unit. They are alpha-2 agonists. And I thought that clone, like clonidine looked like the word clone. And guanfacine looked like iguana faces. So I have like the faces of two iguanas, like the faces of two cloned iguanas. They can cause dry mouth and sedation and so i thought you know think about an iguana's lifestyle iguanas they kind of live really like sedentary lifestyles they don't really move very fast they just kind of big chilling so they're really really sedated and if you've ever seen a iguana's tongue they're like really dry and weird they don't have saliva so that's those two. And now I'm going to move on to the topic of enuresis. So treating kids for like having when they have accidents and they can't control their bladder. So if you want to use drugs, the first one that you can use is oxybutynin or ditropan. So this is an anticholinergic Remember, all anticholinergics cause adverse effects of dryness. So dryness, constipation, urinary retention. And so this whole scene takes place in the desert because deserts are really dry. And like I said, the only picture I want you to focus on is this one right here. It's an ox butt for oxy butt or butanin. He's wearing a diaper because it's going to help you remember that it's for... Um, you know, like wetting your pants, basically. And 
I believe that's all I need to cover for that one. So we're gonna move on to tricyclic antidepressants, which can actually be used, again, for enuresis in kids, but only two of them. So we have, let me, um, let me explain the scene first. So this is Elvis and he, so Elvis is representing Elville and he was desperate, desperate despairing to get to his lover, Pam. So Pamelor, um, but it was, she was located really far, really far away, away, way away. And so it was too far to run to. So too far, nil, too far to run to. So he hopped on his tricycle and pedaled us instead. Tricycle for TCA. Now, the like I said, the only drugs you want to focus here are the dispiramine and the impropramine or tofranil. Again, these are for enuresis. And the MOA is that they are anticholinergic, so that's why we have the cactus here, which again, it is causing dry mouth, um, sedation, and then it can cause mood changes, so that's why this is one of those things that you want to be careful with. And then it is fatal in overdose. So... Just to recap real quick, dispiramine and tofranil are used for enuresis and peds, but you have to be careful. One last drug that is used for enuresis is desmopressin or DDVAP. And this is Des and he is pressing a log. He's pressing a log because this is an analog of vasopressin, which is basically just a vasoconstrictor. And again, it's used for enuresis in kids. And the adverse effect is that it can cause, I have here hyponatremia, in our notes it says water intoxication, which basically would lead to hyponatremia. So this is just an antidiuretic hormone. So next we're gonna talk about infections in, in children. And this is a huge topic. And so, we are going to start with penicillins. So we have penicillins here, use the feet. Pretty much all penicillins are safe in kids. I'm going to hit a couple of the main ones. But first, I have to explain this whole scene. So we're at a concert, but this concert went terribly wrong. This ox busted in and took over the stage. And he scared the staff away because most of these drugs treat staph infections. But anyway, the ox is representing oxacillin. He's got two clocks on his back for di dicloxacillin, and he's taking a nap for nafacillin. We have this hippie here who he was supposed to be on stage, but, you know, got booted off. Um, so the hippie, he's smoking a vape pen, pen for penicillin. And even though he's playing an acoustic guitar, he's hooked up to an amp for ampicillin. We have this mockingbird for amoxicillin uh, singing on this sign here. And then over here, <clears throat> we have this police officer dude, and he's got his, his taser and his pepper spray. So pepper spray for piperacillin and his taser for tasobactam. And he is spraying it at this dog that is attacking this dude. And I have this sign that says, Better Call Saul. And this is a reference to the show Breaking Bad. So I apologize if you don't get the reference. But uh, Saul is a lawyer. It's basically, Saul is representing the drug Saul Bactam. And obviously, if this dude's getting bit by a dog, he needs a lawyer. So anyway. That's what all these represent. So really, we want to focus on drugs for otitis media first. So you're going to choose amoxicillin. And I even have it written here. It's the drug of choice for otitis. So he's just whistling and, or like not whistling, but, you know, birds tweeting away and it hits someone's ear. Ear for otitis media. You can also use augmentin 
which is up here. Uh, dog for dog, Menton, Augmenton. So that's why the dog is in the picture. And his name is Otis. So the dog's name is Otis for Otitis Media. Um, so those are the first two drugs that you want to use for Otitis Media. Another one you can use is Cephpodaxime. And so this is a third generation cephalosporin. As you can see, I have all the cephalosporins kind of just broke up by their generation. And to me, cephalopod seemed sounded like a cephalopod, which is like squids and octopus, octopus, octopuses, <laughs> stuff like that. So we have a, a squid, a cephalopod for cephalopodaxine. So that one's a good one for otitis media also. And then uh, azithromycin can also be used. Now, when I first, which is shown here. Now, when I first drew these, I thought that azithromycin sounded like a Sith Lord, which is from Star Wars. And um, Darth Vader is a Sith Lord, so azithromycin. And it treats otitis, which is what we're talking about right now. That's why he has a big ear. It also treats STDs, which is why we have that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some other stuff. So azithromycin has the footprint here because it's okay for the pediatrics. And just as a reminder, azithromycin is a macrolide, which is why we have a really big slide here. And I guess I should have mentioned, just as review, the MOAs for these. So um, this, all of these macrolides have, they affect the 50S ribosome, which is why we have like this 50 SPF sunscreen sitting here, because it's a really bright day. And then all of our penicillins just bind to PBP and inhibit cell wall synthesis. I don't really have a great way to remember that, but anyway. Now I'm going to move on to otitis externa. So let me recap real quick. Drugs for otitis media were amoxicillin, augmentin, cephalopodoxime, and azithromycin. Now I'm going to move on to otitis externa, which you can use ciprofloxacin. So this is this picture down here is my fluoroquinolone picture. So let me just state the drugs real quick and then I'll explain the picture. You can use ciprofloxacin, you can use ofloxacin, and then just general picture or um, drugs that I don't have pictures for. You can use a, a home remedy such as white vinegar and isopropyl alcohol 50-50, or you could use acetic acid, propylene glycol HC. So those are like two home remedies that you could use. In addition to the ciprofloxacin drops and ofloxacin drops. So just to briefly explain this picture, we have, we're at a bar and you have this guy who has moxie for moxifloxacin and he is dancing on the floor alone. He's dancing, he's gyrating because the MOA is that these bind to DNA gyrase so that DNA can't replicate. We have a lever, like, you know, for drinks, a lever for levofloxacin. And then we have this dude here. He's sipping on a drink, sipping on a drink for ciprofloxacin. And he's watching this dude and he's like, oh boy, that guy's got moves. And so O for ofloxacin. Now he's also got big ears because this is for otitis externa in peds. So the only drugs you really need to worry about here are cipro and ofloxacin. Now I'm going to discuss the infection of a urinary tract infection in children. You can use amoxicillin clavulanate, which I've already covered. You can use cephalosporins, which I've already covered. And now I'm going to talk about Bactrim. So this is my picture for Bactrim. It's a sulfa drug. So he's this dude is sitting on a sofa and he has a really hairy back. 
he needs his back trimmed. So back trimmed for back trim. And this full is licking his foot. And that's because the MOA is that it blocks folic acid synthesis. And it treats UTIs, which is what we are talking about. All these other things, but anyway. Oh, hang on a second. I don't, I think this was a mistake. I did not mean to write otitis external. It treats UTIs. So my apologies, ignore that. So that's Bactrim. Moving on to sepsis, you can use a combination of ampicillin plus gentamicin or ampicillin plus ceftaxine. So I'm going to talk about gentamicin right here. As a reminder, gentamicin is an aminoglycoside, and I thought the aminoglycoside sounded like, I'm going to go to the dark side. Anakin Skywalker, he went to the dark side. Amakin, Anas, Anakin sounded like Amakin or Amakasin, which is a drug here. And then I know these pictures don't really flow together as well, but over here is gentamicin. These hands are very gently holding this 30-pound weight. 30 pounds because the MOA is that it inhibits the 30S ribosome. And this is the only one that's good for pediatrics. And again, we're going to be using this in combination with ampicillin to treat sepsis. So this is pretty severe. And then again, with more sepsis, other options, like I said, are your amoxicillin, so these plus a cephalosporin, such as ceph cefotaxime. So we have a taxi for taxime and ceftriaxone. There is a triax for triaxone. So it might be helpful that these two pictures are right next to each other. And that'll help you remember that those two can be used together to treat sepsis. Treating strep throat is really the same as treating otitis. So your first line is going to be some sort of penicillin. You can use penicillin VK or amoxicillin is preferred. You can also use amoxicillin clavulanate or augmented up here. For epiglottitis, you want to use ceftriaxone plus vancomycin, which is shown here. Vancomycin is a, well, first of all, I always thought that it was just sounded like van. So here I have this ice cream truck that is really peppy. You know, it's, it's singing music. So this is a, the drug class is a glycopeptide. And the van is purple because it only treats gram positive organisms. So it treats things like MRSA and this ice cream cone, rather than having ice cream on it, it's got a little poop swirl because it's also the drug of choice for C. Uh, it again binds to PBPs as its MOA, but it can cause autotoxicity, infusion reactions, and nephrotoxicity. But anyway, so vancomycin can be used in combination with ceftriaxone for epiglottitis in pediatrics. For meningitis in a neonate, you can use a combination of cefotaxime and ampicillin. So here under our third generation cephalosporins, we have, again, the, um, the taxi for cefotaxime. And there's a man standing here watching this. You know, he's the one trying to flag down the taxi. And he's a man because this can treat men meningitis, meningitis. And then likewise, you want, like I said, you want, sorry, you want to use a combination of cefotaxime and ampicillin in neonates for meningitis. Well, this is a man who is hooked up to the amp. So men, we have two men for meningitis. 
And then just in a child, you can use ceftriaxone alone or cefotaxime. So just remember these are for meningitis. Next is viral infections such as chickenpox. You can use a cyclovir to decrease the severity and duration as long as it started within 24 hours. Um, so to represent a cyclovir, I have a cyclops. And he is smacking over the head this viral DNA polymerase and because it's going to inhibit that and um, it can cause some adverse effects such as headache and renal crystals but anyway that's a cyclovir um, and then for chicken pox I don't have a picture of it but you can also use diphenhydramine or Benadryl and so I don't I forgot to bring up the picture but it was basically a drawing of Ben Franklin holding a drill like, a, like an electric drill because Ben a drill and those are just histamine blockers. And then you can also, for chickenpox, use topical corticosteroids to reduce the itching as well. And I'm going to go over corticosteroids a little bit later. So just keep that in mind. Next, I'm just going to generally talk about pain management pediatrics. So your first choice is probably going to be acetaminophen or Tylen. So that's this picture here. And uh, I think Tylenol, we have a bow tie on this stripper pole. And that's just because I associate strippers and prostitutes all together. And I think prostitute kind of sounds like prostaglandin. And so the big bow tie on here is inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. It also inhibits COX-2 and 3 in the central nervous system. So we have a chicken or a cock here with 2 and 3 on it. And adverse effects of this is that it can cause biotoxicity and GI effects. So that's why there's liver and some poop right here. But anyway, acetaminophen is going to be your go-to for pain management in pediatrics. You can use NSAIDs. Most likely, so this whole picture here is NSAIDs. Most likely you're going to use abuprofen. So this is abu from, um, why am I blanking? Um, anyway, that Disney movie that takes place in India. <laughs> um, and um, the, the, the safe in peds, the MOA is that it again inhibits COX. It's a COX inhibitor. So that's why there's lots of chickens in this picture and also reduces prostaglandin synthesis. So here is again, a prostitute and um, I don't remember, it's being inhibited. Oh, right here. This is a cyclo, this is a cyclo, cy cyclone of oxygen and it's being inhibited. Adverse effects are GI, renal, antiplatelet, things like that. I already mentioned that you want to avoid codeine, right? But hydrocodone is okay. I am not sure why, but that's, that's all I know. So... Again, just for pain and then also fever, you can use acetaminophen and ibuprofen in children. Next is the topic of pink eye or conjunctivitis. And since I'm on this slide, I'm just going to mention it. You can use ketorolac, which is right here. It's an NSAID. Um, I believe, oh, uh, so ketorolac, the brand names are a cooler which is why we have a cooler and Toradol. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the picture very well, to be honest with you. But like, if you had a key to the safe, it's open, kind of. Anyway, it's an unsaid, and you can use it 
as an anti-allergy eye drop. So not just, so not all conjunctivitis, only if it's like allergic. You can use Ketorlac along with azalestine, which is shown here. And it's an H1 antagonist. So in this picture, this is a whole bunch of stuff for allergies, but we have this guy who's playing polo on a cow and he's patting its butt. That was for olipatidine. And he's on a calf for alcaptidine. And they're playing next to these azalea flowers for azalestine. And, you know, calves are usually part of like the H, 4-H uh, group. So that's why we have H1, 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 H1. So it's a histamine antagonist, stabilizes mast, cell, mast cells. Adverse effects are stinging, which is why there's a B, and blurry vision, which is why he's wearing glasses. Now, the only thing you need to remember here is the azalestine can be used for allergic conjunctivitis along with ketorolap. And those are drops, I believe. As far as antibiotics go, you can use gentamicin, uh, ciprofloxacin and ofloxacin, and then sulfacetamide, which I do not have a picture of. Next, I'm going to talk about lice in children. So for lice, you can use ivermectin. So ivermectin is shown right here. I thought that sounded like the character Poison Ivy from Batman, if any of you know what I'm talking about. So Ivy for Iver, Ivermectin. And the MOA is that this binds to chloride channels, nerves, and muscle cells, leading to parasite paralysis and death. So she is using her little Ivy. She's blocking the chloride channel, resulting in paralysis, like I said. And then it just causes local irritation, which they all cause local irritation. So there's just this big local sign right in the middle. And here's the footprint showing you that it's safe from feeds. And then uh, topical permethrin at the time, I just, you know, focused on the word meth that was in this word permethrin. And so I drew this little meth smoke thing pipe. I don't know what they're called. But the MOA for that is that it also blocks sodium channels. Oh, I'm sorry, sodium, not not chloride, but sodium channels in the parasite. Um, and it's a neurotoxin because of that. And like I said, causes a little irritation. So for lice, you can use ivermectin and permethrin. And then I do not have a picture of it, but you can use a combination of citric acid citronella acetate, isopropanol, and methyl salicylate, which the MOA is that this is a mechanical remover, and you'll have to comb it out, um, but it basically just kills the eggs, and that also has the adverse effect of local irritation. Next, I'm going to talk about croup, which I don't have a whole lot of pictures for, but for croup, you can use racemic nebulized epinephrine, which I do not have a picture of. You can use fluids because kids get dehydrated really easily. And then you can also use dexamethasone, which is only just barely mentioned in this picture of corticosteroids that are used for breathing. So for croup, again, it's nebulized epinephrine, fluids, and dexamethasone. And then moving on to bronchiolitis, you can use oxygen and albuterol says it's widely used, but not helpful. So they recommend racemic or that nebulized epinephrine, but I'll show you my picture for albuterol real quick. So these are beta-2 agonists. And this is Al. He is wearing a sombrero. Sombrero is for Saba. Sabrero, sombrero, for a short-acting beta agonist. Like I said, this is Al, and he's sitting on his butt, for Al butt, Al buterol. 
and I will come back to the rest of these in a little bit because there's quite a few of them that can be used for asthma. But for now, I'm just talking about bronchiolitis. So you can use albuterol. You can use Afrin spray. I always thought Afrin sounded like the Aflac duck. And so Afrin is that it just causes local vasoconstriction. And then you can also use for bronchiolitis dexamethasone again. Dexamethasone. And then nebulized hypertonic sodium chloride, which again is not in any of my pictures. But next I'm going to talk about cystic fibrosis, which I have a whole picture for. So this is a apartment in California, basically. And the two drugs are Dornay's Alpha and I have a calf door or Cali Deco. So I'm going to focus on the word door nays here because this is a door for door nays alpha and cali deco such like california decor like deco decor so that's why we have like the golden gate bridge here and it's really sunny and we have the little california flag so the moa is that this digests dna in mucus Oh, that's for Dornay's alpha. Sorry. Yeah. Digest DNA and mucus. So we have mucus right here. Mm. And here's that DNA. Adverse effects are cough and chest pain. And then for I the calf door, the MOA is that this is for selected genetic mutations. So it's a CFTR modulator. I don't have a great way to remember that. Um Maybe you could think like modulator, like this is a modern room, I guess. And then the adverse effects are GI and then elevated liver enzymes. So we just have a, a liver on this lamp here for the adverse effects. And just a reminder, cystic fibrosis, I mean, this makes sense because it mainly occurs in pediatric kids. Um, and that's just when you have thick respiratory and GI secretions. So in addition to these drugs, which kind of help with the mucus secretions, you want to give them antibiotics that treat pseudomonas. Uh, you can give them bronchodilators such as these, which again, I will discuss in a little bit, and then mucolytics. Next, I'm going to talk about diabetes in children. So this picture here is all the different types of insulin. All of the insulins are safe in children. And just as a reminder, you have your short acting ones over here. You have your kind of medium and then your long acting insulins over here. I'm not really gonna go into that much further. But metformin is safe in children. So I will go through all of these because I think they're good to know. So the MOA of metformin is that it decreases the production of glucose in the liver and improves insulin sensitivity in skeletal muscle. So this lake here is in the shape of a liver. And this is a little sugar cube here because it decreases sugar in the liver and improves insulin sensitivity. So I thought insulin sounded like insect. And so there's gonna be a lot of insects in all these pictures because insects refer to insulin. And this insect is right by his bicep, right by his skeletal muscle. So it improves insulin sensitivity in skeletal muscle. Adverse effects are nausea, which is why, and I, I should have explained, this is like the Mets baseball, like their, um, mascot, so Mets for metformin. And he's throwing up because the adverse effects are nausea, uh, diarrhea, so we have a little poop symbol here, weight loss, which is shown by these trees, so we have a fat tree that's getting a little bit smaller. Uh, same thing with anorexia. And then lactic acidosis, we have like acidosis, like lemons are really acidic. 
You can also use sulfonylureas in children. So here's a footprint. And sulfonylureas, I thought, sounded like a cell phone and urea like urine. So we have a cell phone that is urinating. This is going to increase insulin from the pancreas. So this is a bush that looks like a pancreas and there are insects coming from it. So there's an increase in insulin from the pancreas. And uh, the drugs in this category are shown here. So they all start with Gs. We have glipizide. So this one has big lips for glipizide. This one's really cold for glyburide, glyburide. And then this one is holding a lime for glymperide. And they are hiding from the cell phone that is peeing. Hiding because they all end in the word eyed. And this is a hippo for hypoglycemia. And hippos are really fat, and so it causes weight gain. So that's that. Other diabetic drugs that are safe in children are your TZDs or your thiazolidinones. And so this is a piece of pie holding a rose for pioglitazone and rosaglitazone. It reduces insulin resistance and improves its action in tissues. So this is a box of tissues and insulin has bound to the tissues to improve its resistance. Um, adverse effects are peripheral edema. So this pie has really fat legs compared to its skinny arms. Peripheral edema, an increase in coronary events, which is why there's a heart, and then weight gain. If you eat a lot of pie, you're going to gain weight. Another drug you can use is our SGLT2 inhibitors. I thought SGLT kind of sounded like soldier if you used your imagination or flip those letters around. So we have a toy soldier here. And it's winter time, everything's frozen. That's why, because they all in frozen. And so we have a empanada for empagliflozin and there's a dirty bag for depagliflozin. And then this is a can of food for canagliflozin. So those are all your G SGLT2 inhibitors. They, of course, inhibit SGLT2, which lowers the renal threshold for glucose spilling into the urine. Adverse effects are glucosuria. So that's why we have this syrup here that is being poured onto your empanada for some reason. I don't know. Um, but glucose is spilling because syrup is really sugary. So glucose is spilling into the urine. Um, so that means there's an increased risk for infection and dehydration. You can also use DPP-4 inhibitors. So you put dip in your lip, and all of these have the word lip within them. So DPP-4. These work by blocking the action of DPP-4, which is an enzyme that destroy, destroys incretin. Incretin increases insulin production. So we have an ink bottle here to represent the MOA of of in, incretin, ink cretin. And then our drugs are just listed here. We have an aloe plant for alogliptin, a saxophone for saxagliptin, linen on a line for linagliptin, a chair that you sit in for citagliptin, and that's it. Adverse effects are hypersensitivity, which is shown by this little sad face. It's really sensitive. And then pancreatitis, that's supposed to be a pancreas. So again, the drugs that you can use in your pediatric patients are, of course, insulin, and then metformin, sulfonylureas, your TZD, TZDs, your SGLT2s, and your DPP-4 inhibitors. And there is one more that I forgot to mention. You can use GLP-1 agonists as well. So... 
The mechanism of this is that it suppresses postprandial glucagon secretion, slows gastric emptying, increases insulin secretion in the presence of glucose. This picture takes place on an ocean by the tide because all of these drugs end in the word tide. And there's this dude, and he just ate a meal, so he's postprandial, and there's an increase in insects here because of increased insulin secretion. In the drugs in this category, we have a semi for semaglutide. The hippo is singing for lyra glutide, like lyrics. We have a really dull pencil for dull glutide, and then X marks the spot for X sanotide. Again, the hippo is in this picture for hypoglycemia. Um, anorexia, I don't think as shown. Nausea, and then pancreatitis is right there. So now I'm going to move on to some other respiratory medications that can be helpful in kids who are just have like mm -hmm. your simple cough and cold, that type of thing. So the first one is, so I already mentioned Afrin. You can use this chromalin, which I might, I think I cover it later, but it's a crow, chromalin. It's an anticholinergic. Um, but we're going to focus right now on this leukotriene antagonist which is Montelukast. So this is a Monte Carlo car, Monte for Montelukast. It is a leukotriene D4 antagonist. So there's a D4 on the car, a D4 antagonist, which reduces inflammation and edema. Adverse effects are headache, neuropsych effects, which is here, and then EGPA. EGPA stands for eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, which is a form of vas vasculitis characterized by inflammation within small blood vessels. So that can lead to organ damage, basically. Another drug that you can use is dextromethorphan. So this is Dexter for dextromethorphan. It is an analog of codeine. So I wrote like codes, like computer codes, codes for codeine right there. And it is also an N-methyl D aspirate receptor antagonist, which sounds very sciencey and Dexter is also very sciencey. Um, it does have the adverse effect of abuse potential, slurred speech, psychosis, hallucinations, and euphoria. Uh, just following along with the PowerPoint, we next talk about gastrointestinal pharmacotherapy. pharmacotherapy. So for constipation, but for first, you want to evaluate medication-related causes and try different dietary interventions and hydration first. But if you want to use farm, then one of the later things you can do is um, a lubricant such as mineral oil. So this is just this. All of my drugs for constipation have to do with outer space because I thought that constipation sounds like constellation. So this is a planet with minerals on it for mineral oil. Like I said, it's a lubricant, it traps water into stool. And of course, anytime that you're trying to treat like constipation, the opposite can happen and can cause diarrhea. But some other drugs. Other drugs for constipation are your Miralax and your glycerin. Again, as I just said, I think that 
I think, constipation constellations. So a constellation that we all know is the Big Dipper. And so just I made every single point of the Big Dipper a different type of drug. So here's a mirror for mirror alax, which is polyethylene glycol. And then down here is this star that is really shiny and glistening. So glycerin, glistening for glycerin. And all of these just draw water into stool. Now remember, the Big Dipper, a dipper is used up used to draw up water. And then of course, adverse effect is diarrhea. To treat diarrhea in children, avoid anti-diarrheal medications. You just want to evaluate their, and if, if they have any medication related causes. So for diarrhea, there really isn't any pharmacological treatments for kids. Still sticking with some gastrointestinal topics though, uh, to treat nausea and vomiting, you can use Zofran or Ondansetron, which is shown here. So just to explain this picture, we have Granny who is dancing. So Granny was for Granansetron and she's dancing for Ondansetron. And she is doing the limbo or do limbo do Lansetron. And she's dancing to piano music. So just piano and palancetron start with the same thing. And the limbo height is set at five foot three because this is a 5-HT3 or a serotonin antagonist. Adverse effects are headache and arrhythmias. So Again, the only one safe in peds is on Dancitron, so dancing. And again, that's Zofran. For nausea and vomiting, you can also use prom promethiazine. So I thought, which is Phenergan. And I thought that prom sounded like Rome, and there's not really a better way to represent Rome than the classic Colosseum. And so. This is an anti-dope, dopamine, an antihistamine, and an anticholinergic. And its adverse effects are sedation, movement disorder, and then of course, anticholinergic effects. So I have like the anti-dope is kind of shown in this picture. I don't really have anything else shown. Moving on to oral care, I know I already talked about for teething that you could use that or a gel. You can also just use for teething like cold teething rings and ibuprofen. But if they have candidiasis, you can use nystatin a suspension. And so that is shown here in this picture. So the drug category was a polyenes. So I drew some polywogs for polyenes, so some tadpoles. And ta um, tadpoles or frogs, they're amphibians. So amphotericin B was one of them. And then this tadpole is dressed like Bill Nye. Bill Nye or Nye Staten. And they're hanging on to this stair here because they bind to stair alls and in the fungal cell membrane, which alters the cell's permeability. So adverse effects, um, ignore, kind of ignore what's on here. Well, diarrhea is one of them, but the other one is that it tastes bad because we're talking about the oral suspension here and it doesn't have a very good taste apparently. So again, nystatin is for oral candidiasis. And now I'm going to talk about corticosteroids, which before I do that, I found my Benadryl picture. So there's Benjamin Franklin with a drill. Um, but anyway, back to corticosteroids. This picture is for that. And these are just used in general, usually as sprays for like breathing treatments and things like that. So we have budesonide, which is 
Buddha on a slide. Buddha on a slide, Buddhasonide. We have fluticasone, so a tick is under the slide. Oh, fluticasone, anyway. Um, hydrocortisone is not pictured. You can use mometasone, so that's what this is. This is a mom in the park, mom for mometasone. And then you can also use triamcinolone. So this is little triangle monkey bars for tri. So triangle for triamcinolone. And then again, I threw in dexamethasone right here. And then here's your little pediatric feet. So, and then just a brief note. So the mometasone can come in a nasal spray. It can come in a cream slash ointment. And it can also come as an inhaler. And then triamcinolone can be a nasal spray and then also a cream slash ointment. Fluticasone can come as a nasal spray, an inhaler, and then a cream and ointment. So the next topic is pediatric asthma, which the first thing that you can try is an inhaled or nebulized corticosteroid. So again, that's here things like fluticasone, mometasone, triamcinolone. So that you can also use these for asthma. And oh, and one more last corticosteroid that you can use is prednisone. So this is a predator for prednisone. It causes apoptosis, which is why this balloon is popping from the predator's sharp teeth, apoptosis. Immunomodulation, it's an anti-inflammatory and anti-nausea. Adverse effects of hyperglycemia, which is why there's a piece of candy here, and then sodium water retention. So that's prednisone. Mm, now I'm ready to talk more about pediatric asthma. So you can use beta-2 agonists, such as salmeterol, Formeterol and R formeterol. So now let me explain this picture. The MOA is that it increases. Well, my apologies. I think that's just this. For beta two agonists, that's their MOA. They're going to relax bronchial smooth muscle. So again, I already mentioned this is Al sitting on his butt for albuterol. He's wearing a sombrero because it's a short-acting beta agonist. And he has caught a salmon, salmon for salmeterol. And the salmon was swimming in lava, lava for lava, which is a long-acting beta agonist. The deck was level, so that's levobuterol. And uh, this is a barrel of... Like, you know, like alcohol, like drug, usually it ferments in a barrel, like alcohol ferments. So that's why it's formeterol, ferment, like fermenting, formeterol. But when we opened it, a bunch of lava came out, and that's because formeterol is a lava. Same thing with our formeterol. So this is like graffiti on a tree, which is a form of art. So form of art or R form at all. So the ones, and there's this other one too, but the ones that are using peds are the salmeterol, the albuterol, the formeterol, and the R femur. And it can cause tremors. So that's why this fish is really shaky here. It's tremoring. And then tachycardia, which is why this is a heart with the arrow going up for tachycardia. You can also use theophylline. And so when we learned this drug, theophylline was in combination with aminophylline. Thought that amino sounded like the horse, palomino, it's type horse. And so I drew a horse reading theology, reading the Bible, theology for theophylline. These inhibit the metabolism of cyclic AMP, which is why we have some campfires, cyclic AMP, camp, campfires. 
They can cause seizures and arrhythmias. So seizures are shown here and then arrhythmias are shown here. And then I already mentioned, but for asthma, you can also use the leukotriene modifiers such as Matalucast. Which I remembered is shown here, basically in the same picture. Um, in addition though, you can use omalizumab. So the German word for grandma is oma. So I drew a German grandma on a sailboat for Oma Lizumab. And this is a maintenance therapy for preventing asthma attacks. And it binds to IgE so that they can't bind to mast cells and basophils, which cause allergic reactions. So the key word here is mast cells. So this is a mast of the ship. And the ship is called IgE. Adverse effects are injection site reactions, increased viral infections, and anaphylaxis, which none of those are shown. Um, his notes also say that, oh, never mind, sorry, okay. that's, that's it for omalizumab. Some more examples, then again, still talking about asthma. Some more examples of interleukin inhibitors are mepolizumab, the brand name is Nakula, and then benralizumab, benralizumab, brand name is Spesonera, and then du dupilumab, brand name is Dupixent. So this, I originally, this pictures from a long time ago and it originally just had the depixent and then this other picture in it and basically it's it's kind of confusing but these two teams are playing volleyball this team's it's got two people on it so it's a duo like like duo for like do pill you map or do pixin and I'm not gonna really go through the numbers, but I mean, this team is against interleukins 4 and 13, which is why they're playing against 4 and 13, and it's blocking IgE, they block the ball. And then, like, this one was like U Team USA for US Stecumab, like U Stecumab, and it's playing against IL 12 and 23. Anyway, all you really need to know is that they're monoclonal antibodies against interleukins. Their adverse effects are injection site reactions, headache, and hypersensitivity. Now, the new drugs that I don't remember learning before, I added right here. So we have mepolizumab. So this guy, he's like, me, I'm a police. Me, police, you map. So he's a police. And he has his dog named Ben. So he's like, Ben, sit down. So Ben, relizumab. And these are, again, for pediatric. Asthma. And so that's really all the drawings that I have for this module. There is one more slide on diaper dermatitis where he lists a lot of like over the counter projects, such products, such as petroleum, zinc oxide paste, beeswax, lanolin, vitamin A and D ointment. He says if it's severe, you can use cortical, topical steroids such as hydrocortisone. And then if it's infected, use antifungals such as nystatin, clotrimazole, and myconazole. And he goes on. But basically, that is the majority of things. So again, I would recommend that you go back through the slides because there are a couple things that I don't have pictures of, such as, like I said, the pharmacokinetics. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that is it. So again, as always, thank you for watching.